Okay, we're continuing on with exponential growth and decay. Today we're talking about transformations of exponential growth and decay. And so the exponential um, general equation is y equals a in parentheses b raised to the x minus h power all of it plus k. So we're bringing back our h's and k's. And then the parent function is just y equals b raised to the x power. And so a, as with any other graph we've done, it stretches, stretches and compresses, and it also flips or reflects. So it stretches and flips the graph. Our h value moves the graph left or right. And remember, opposite. Your x's lie. So just think opposite for this one. And then your k value moves up or down. And it's the same. So if k is positive, it moves up. Negative, it moves down. This also tells you where the asymptote, so hopefully you remember us talking about asymptotes previously. We're going to go over those a little bit more. It tells you where the asymptote crosses the y-axis. So if you can find the k transformation, you can find the asymptote. So the asymptote is a line that a graph approaches as x or y increases in absolute value. For these, this is your new x-axis. So we treat the asymptote kind of like it's an x-axis going straight across like this. Okay, critical point, this is the point where the parent function crosses the y-axis. So it's our y-intercept. So if we look, parent function for exponential growth functions, the x-axis is an asymptote of the graph. That's a line that, that we just talked about. The graph rises from left to right, passing through the points 0, 1, and 1, b. Those are both very important. 0, 1 is the critical point. 1, b is always the second point that the graph passes through. The domain of the parent function, b to the x, is all reals, because you can see it goes from left to right. The range is y is greater than k. And in this case, k is just the x-axis, because it didn't shift up. The graph approaches the asymptote over on the left. So you can see it gets closer and closer as it moves to the left. That's a growth function. Now a decay function, very similar. The x-axis is still the asymptote. The graph falls from left to right, still passes through 0, 1, and 1, b. The domain of y equals b to the x is still all reals. The range is still y is greater than k. But now the graph approaches the asymptote on the right because it's getting smaller and smaller, going, getting smaller and smaller, going lower and lower. All right, give me a second to switch to the second page. And now we get to do the fun stuff. All right, graphing by hand. So we have six steps. Identify the asymptote and draw it. We'll write the two points, 0, 1, and 1, b. b is according to the equation, it's the b value. Multiply the y values by a, add k to the new y values, add h to the x values, connect the points in the correct direction. So basically, something you need to know is the new y value is equal to the old y times a plus k. The new x is equal to x plus h. And you'll see how we use that 
as we move down. So it says for each equation below, state the asymptote, the critical point, transformations, domain range, and then graph it. So the asymptote is pretty easy to find. You look at the k value. In this case, it's 1. So our asymptote would be y equals 1. All right. Now, when we're graphing these, we only need to graph two points. And the way we do it, original, is 0, 1, and 1, b. In this case, our b value is 2. So inside here, we'll put 2. Now, to find our new points, we look at our graph. And I'm actually going to list our transformations because I think this will help. Our A value, there is none. No A value. H, it's plus 1, so that means it moves left 1. And then the K is plus 1, so it moves up 1. So now I'm going to go back. X, if I move left 1, that means I have subtracting 1. So that means left 1 from 0 becomes negative 1. From 1 becomes 0. That I moved each of these left one unit. Now, for the new y value, that's where we're using our equation that we came up with. It's y times a plus k. In this case, a is 1 and k is 1. So it equals 1 times 1 plus 1. 1 times 1 plus 1 is 2. Then I go here. 2 times a plus k. 2 times 1 plus 1 gives me 3. And so our critical point is always this top one, the one that matches up with the zero one. So my critical point would be at negative one, two. So now I know what I need. I know the two points I want to graph, and I know my asymptote. So I'm going to plot my asymptote in blue, and that's at y equals one. That's the dotted line. That's my asymptote. And I'm going to graph my points. So I have a negative 1, 2 right there, and 0, 3 right there. And so then my graph, I know I can tell it's moving up from left to right. So it's going to be here, go through the two points, and it gets larger pretty quickly. So my domain, it will be all reals. And my range is y is greater than 1, because that's where my asymptote was at. So hopefully that's not doesn't seem so far out there. All we're finding is the two new points that we're graphing. All right, so for number 2, this one's a little more difficult. Asymptote. asymptote Still, we do the same thing. y equals negative 4. It's our k value. For the original, I need to plug in my b value, which in this case is 1 half. And then I'm going to find my new x's and y's. So in this case, a is 3. So for y, it equals 3 times y minus 4. 3 times a times the old y minus 4. So 3 times 1 is 1, or uh, 3 times 1 is 3 minus 4. That's going to give us negative 1. 1 half times 3 is 3 halves. 3 halves minus 4 is negative 2 and a half. When we do h, all we do is when it moves, so if I look, my transformation stretch by 3. Sometimes it's easier to put your transformations first. h, when it's x minus 5, that means right 5. And k is down 4. So to move 0, right 5, that means it puts it at 5. And to move 1, 5, that puts it at 6. So that means our critical point is this first one, 5, negative 1. 
and we're going to start graphing. So I'm going to graph my asymptote first, which is at negative 4. So that is right 1, 2, 3, 4 down. And then our points are 5, negative 1, and 6, negative 2.5. So this one you can see from left to right is moving down. So it's approaching the asymptote on the right. So the graph is going to look something like that. Domain is all reals, and the range is y is greater than negative 4. So you can tell it's decreasing because our B value is between 0 and 1. So now if we look at the last one we have something different in that our A value is a negative and we have no K value. So if we have no K value that means our asymptote is Y equals 0. So our transformations, if we have a negative out front, that means reflex across x-axis. And then h means right 2, because it's minus 2. k is none. So our B value going in here is a 4. So now when we move our X's, they move 2 to the right. So 0 becomes 2 and 1 becomes 3. For our Y values, it's Y times A plus K. Our A value is negative 1. So 1 times negative 1, negative 1. 4 times negative 1, negative 4. So our critical point is at 2 negative 1. So you can see what we have so far. We know our asymptote is at 0. And now the graph has shifted, has flipped, so it's going to be pointing, it's going to be below the asymptote rather than above the asymptote. So our points are 2, negative 1, right there, and 3, negative 4, right there. So we know it's going this way and this way. So it's approaching the asymptote on the left, and it's getting smaller. Our domain is still all reals, but now y isn't gr the range isn't greater than 0, but less than, because it got flipped upside down. So you can see all the different transformations we've had with these three problems and hopefully after looking at this it doesn't get you too confused if you do please check in uh, with your teachers